Bez tebe nemohl jsem žít, nebylo kudy kam jít. Já tam, kde čekal jsem víc, nebylo nic. Všechno si na sebe vzal. Well, we got an invitation to go to the Czech Republic. Now, we didn't even know where the Czech Republic was, other than it was one of those countries behind the Iron Curtain. So we had to get out a map and find it. So after spending four summers in the Czech Republic, we located to this nation in December of 1997. So we have been here now for over 15 years. During the Soviet occupation of this country, the government appropriated a great deal of the real estate and other holdings of the church. At the fall of communism in 1989, each of the churches that had been established before 1948 got each year an allotment of money from the government. Because of that, the government did not want to see new denominations spring up and be established in this country because it would um, muddy those waters. And so we're working interdenominationally by working with the indigenous churches that were already established in this country. And we are accomplishing evangelism, both through leadership development and community outreach. This is a nation of 10 million people of those 10 million people, we would count perhaps 30,000 who are born-again Christians right now. There are many, many nations in the Muslim culture, Hinduism, who have a higher percentage of Christians than this nation does. I would have to say that the Czech spiritual situation is very difficult. Our fathers, the Moravian Church, had to leave the country for political reasons in the 17th century. All spiritual life left from this country. The country was under the rule of Catholicism, and then after the fall of the Habsburg monarchy, people didn't trust the church at all. After that came two world wars, and then of course the period of communism. Communism planted hatred against the church in people's hearts. Now, in the Soviet Union, many people came back to religion after the fall of communism, but in the Czech Republic, people rejected the church. They did not see it as a solution for their problems. Instead, the people turned to occultism, parapsychology, and parapsilosophies. In the early 1990s, when we started coming here, there was a bit of a revival going on after the fall of the Iron Curtain. After the communist collapse of the Iron Curtain, many missionaries, especially from the USA, were entering our country. They said that they came to help, but instead of helping the Czech church, they started to build their own groups. In fact, I have to say that in 1995, I and some other pastors were fed up with US missionaries. So after spending four summers in the Czech Republic, we located to this nation in December of 1997. When Ken and Linda came in 1997, we had reservations about who they were and what they wanted to do. 
when we first moved here, we, we were charged to really just spend a great deal of time, actually the first year of being here, simply developing relationships. Among other things, we opened our, our spare bedroom to host people who were coming to Liebritz for training in terms mm -hmm. of Christian leadership or even Bible school. So during that first year, we established a lot of um, relationships and friendships with with the people who are now leaders in the church. Because of that, now we have a network that we work with perhaps as many as 20, 24 churches all told. I remember when we first came, my big question to the Lord was, what happens when I have grandchildren? Because I wanted to be around for my grandchildren. So I said, okay, in two years, we'll, we'll talk about whether you want us to stay. Well, after two years, it was obvious that he wanted us to stay and we wanted to stay because we, we love the Czech people, we love the Czech country. The only thing we missed was our family and friends. Three years later, my son got married and I go, okay, Lord, what are we going to do? Well, guess what? My daughter borrowed a camera that had a new application. Didn't even know it existed. It took 10 second video. And she took 10 second video of Zeke's first cry and 10 second video of my son holding his son for the first time. And within three hours, I had that video on email. And five years ago, I said, what am I going to do? And it was like I was there. So God has a way of meeting your needs and knowing what's important to you and finding a way to do it. After about a year of being in the Czech Republic and establishing relationships with a variety of different pastors and church leaders, Linda and I were invited to come to a, a small community that's a, probably about 20 miles from our home to help the pastor uh, reach and serve the gypsy community, the Roma, who had, beginning, had begun to um, visit his church and he really did not know um, how to serve or how to reach them. We went up and we met some of the leaders of the Roma um, church and Ken just went up to the kingpin and said, hey, I want to come to your house for dinner. 
Ken came to me with a calendar, and he said he wanted to visit me on Sunday for lunch. Peppa, being like Ken, they're like blood brothers, just pulled out his calendar and says, okay, when you want to come. I was surprised by my wife's response. She said, are you crazy? You don't even know them. And she asked, what will we cook? We can cook anything. They're normal people. We showed up and I thought for sure that sometime during that afternoon, his wife was going to fall to the ground with a heart attack. She was extremely nervous. I remember that we made potatoes with fried cauliflower and they liked it. We just got along fine and even though Ken could not speak Roma and Peppa could not speak English, they communicated through pantomime and just they, from day one, they were solid friends and could communicate. We invited his children to come and spend the weekend with us. We took them to the zoo. We fed them their first hamburgers. We just really loved on that family. One thing I want to say is that Ken is very close to me. I love him and I consider him my spiritual father. He's also like my brother. He's now, after 15 years, um, one of three pastors of the local Roma congregation. It serves as an elder and second pastor. His wife is very, very active in the, the children's ministry. Ken and I have had a lot of fun together. A very funny time was when he bought a whole pig for a grill party. We killed the pig and gave it to my friend to prepare for the barbecue, but during the week, the meat from the pig spoiled. Now, we didn't realize it until we started grilling it. At first, I didn't smell it, but gradually we realized that the meat was completely bad. There were lots of people invited, and when they came to the place, they saw that there was no pig. They were all afraid that we had already eaten it. So we told them we had buried the pig instead. We told them that they had come to a funeral and not a barbecue. We laughed about this situation, but Ken went out and bought hot dogs and cooked them for everyone. Besides working in this town, Peppa asked Ken to go to Slovakia and evangelize his hometown, which was uh, Seoul, Slovakia, which is eastern Slovakia, almost to the Ukraine. Not only did we go the next year, but we were teaching in a Bible school, and Ken taught evangelism and cross-cultural ministry, and we took the Bible students, and we set up a, a battery-operated sound system and did an evangelistic outreach in their street, and a lot of people responded. As a result of that, there have been two Romani congregations established in that area. And that's been really rewarding to Linda and I, to have the ability through expressing Christ's love to these people, to be able to walk in now to gypsy communities all over the country and be accepted because word travels as to who and who not can be trusted, who and who not is really uh, in love and serving our culture and there's there's not a gypsy community in this country that I don't think we'd be welcomed with open arms and that's really quite unique for a white person. As a short-term uh, missionary that's going for a few weeks of a month even or half year you always have in the back of the mind I've got an escape clause I'm going home the feeling I got is I have moved to Mars because everything is different. There is a point out there, maybe nine months to 18 months, where you come to the realization that I'm not going home, I got to fit here. And it becomes a, uh, almost like you hit a wall. There were days when I didn't want to get out of bed because life can be so very difficult. In the United States, you can go to the grocery store, you can buy eight ounce, pre-wrapped eight ounces of, of lunch meat, and you know how many sandwiches you can get out of that with a loaf of bread. All the shops were one room stores at the time. And most of the time, everything was behind the counter, and you were supposed to ask for what you wanted. They sell meat by grams. 
I have no idea what a gram is. I have no idea how many grams it takes to make a sandwich. And even if I did, I don't know the numbering system. It's a half day project just to get the materials to make a sandwich. Ultimately, you figure out, okay, if I buy 100 grams of meat, I can make four sandwiches. Well, how do you say 100 grams in the Czech language? There are actually three different ways to say 100. Finally, I got myself a, pa a deck of three by five cards and I wrote numbers out. So I would go to the store, I would point at a piece, stick of meat, hold up a flash card. She would reach around and until she was touching the meat I wanted, I would give her the signal, show her the card, and then go, cut it for me please. Now, for me, this is a fun story, but in the middle of it, it was a full-time exhausting project, especially when you're in the front of a line of 30 people who are elbowing you and telling you to get out of line, oh, we got, I got things to do with my life. It, it's stressful. And that's one example of a thousand things that it takes to get from sunup to sundown. And when you are there, it weighs heavily on you and there those days you okay, I don't want to get I don't even want to get up and have a sandwich it's not worth it you come to a point that if you don't know God has called you to this it'll kill you so I'm very thankful that I knew God said this is your home We knew when we were coming in that we were going to help the Czech church, pioneer churches, and which they have done. And we love helping them pioneer a church. The, the half dozen teens that are we're currently meeting with on a weekly basis all understand that they are there in that town to become future evangelists to the young people in the town. Right now we do weekly devotionals. The devotionals are focused at training them to be directed and focused at reaching the teens in that, that community. So we're teaching them some things about, about outreach and about love and about serving and about um, all the things that are associated with, with reaching their generation. Thank you.
While most people were not interested in Jesus, they wanted to learn English. So Ken and Linda began to offer English conversation classes in local churches to help build relationships between Christians and the community. Is there something you feel so strongly about that you would be, be willing to suffer for it? Wow. It's a heavy question, yes. It's very heavy. It's a challenge. In, uh, in last time, in communism, very, very many people, uh, they suffered. 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 suffered for, for their belief in Jesus. Mm -hmm. But I think that it isn't a good question, uh, easy question, because I don't know what, what I what will what mm -hmm. will I do. Mm -hmm. okay. But I would would like to do. You it. know what you, you know what your heart is. Yeah. 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 She started attending our weekly English conversation groups right here in our home. That's right. And from that, she started coming to what we call congregation, which was a, a Sunday evening gathering where we shared a meal here and talk about um, Christian faith. It's been successful in all these different areas, in all these different churches. And we just have the joy of seeing it happen. And it really makes it worthwhile why we're here. You know, it's, it's fun. I just have to say our ministry is fun. <laughs> Another outreach of the Stapletons is to tell their very interesting story about their lives as hippies. And we've done that about 30 times over the course of our time yeah. here. People who come to hear their story also hear a powerful testimony about how they met Christ. Another way they minister is by preparing Thanksgiving dinners and explaining the story of the first Thanksgiving in America. Linda is especially a wonderful narrator, and Ken is an amazing cook. We'll cook a whole roasted turkey and they will invite a group of people to come. Chefs have never seen a whole turkey, right. cook, cooked or right. not cooked. Ken bakes the turkey, and then it is served by a church to all the people and friends that they invite to a fancy celebration. Another ministry of the Stapletons are the English and summer camps. Linda is a fantastic teacher, and Ken often serves as a chef in the kitchen. In this country, when less than 1% are born-again Christians, people haven't even met a born-again Christian, and now they get to live with them for 10 days, and mm -hmm. many of them are attracted to Christ and have become believers. And that really is a gateway for young people. We really appreciate that they are practical, ready to work, skilled, and active. We are grateful for them. There are times in, in our ministry where you think, is there something else I could be doing, should be doing with my time that I'm not? And is this really having a long-lasting effect or value for the kingdom? 
There's been a pastor who we are now meeting with on a weekly basis serving in his community. It may have been because of a language barrier, but for the first 10 years of our existence here in this country, there was really a distance between Linda and I and him and the community he was in. And he, we have recently begun working in his town, not because of his invitation, but because of the invitation of, of another pastor that serves there. But um, it has drawn us into relationship with him. And it was, hasn't been more than maybe a month, maybe six weeks ago. Um, just out of the blue, I was talking to him. And he said, uh, It's going to take a while. He said that he considered Linda and I a gift to the Czech Republic. And that's our reward. I'm grateful that Ken and Linda corrected my view of American missionaries. We are now friends, and I expect to have a lifelong friendship with them. Now, for them to stay here, of course, they need your support. They need your prayers. We, too, need for you to pray for them and to support them with greetings from home or with finances. It's up to you. I'm sure that they will be grateful for any support. Ken and Linda are doing a valuable work and we are very satisfied with them. Please keep on supporting Ken and Linda. We are very glad to have them here. For you who are on the other side in the USA, I want to say they're doing a really good job. What they're doing really is God's work. They're in the right place and I think God has sent them here. I'm glad they're here in the Czech Republic and I'm really grateful for their ministry. They've ministered to me many times and they've ministered to my wife and to my children. A long time ago, our Moravian fathers sent missionaries to America. We have the feeling that we are now receiving back part of something that was given by our country to the United States. Thank you. So we just want to say thank you to all of you that have supported us over the years. And uh, we just couldn't do it on our own. We need the Holy Spirit and we need a team. So thank you for praying for us, for supporting us. a dýchá pro to, co se ti líbí to, co ti na očích vidí bije a touží 
žije a dýchá. Pro to, co se ti líbí, to, co ti na očích vidí. Běžím a toužím, končím se a nepadám. 